The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD available from SDC Publications. In this video I'm going to show you how you can plot using layouts. Now in Chapter 4 the template that you used to create this drawing had a few layers already created in it. You had this magenta rectangle and the layer here is actually called the model space layer. There was another layer that you used it on here that was called the miter box layer and with this layer you were actually asked to uh, begin your top front and side views in these corners it provided a miter line already there for you and um, it just helped to keep the line, uh, views in line but once we put in dimensions we needed more space than what this little miter box gave us so we can turn off that miter layer and then just use the move command to give us a little more space in between the views once those dimensions get in there. It was getting kind of tight and crowded. So now that we've turned off that layer, move the views apart and be sure when you do that move command that you turn your ortho on because you want the views to still stay perfectly in line with each other from the top to the front and from the front to the side. Now the next thing that we need to do, if you read the little instructions over here in the magenta layer, it says to turn off the miter box, which I've already done, and turn off the model space layers when you're ready to plot your views. So I've already turned off miter box, now I need to turn off model space, and this looks good. The reason for that is we don't want those layers to plot. We don't want to see all that text in the magenta box or the miter box when we're ready to plot. Now I do have my notes already put down here. Um, I use those notes, I use multi-line text and also the note height. It's important to remember that the note height is the same as your text height. So your text height should match your arrows and your text height should also match your notes. Now I'm going to click to get into my layout. I'm going to click over here to layout one. Now I've got a model tab, that's where I am right now, that has kind of the dark gray background. I'll click on layout one and here we have everything that you need for your drawing. So we've already got in paper space, we've got your title block, we've got your border, and we've got everything else set up the way that you need it. We're in paper space right now, and I can tell I'm in paper space because I see the word paper right here. Also, a few other ways that I know I'm in paper space is my cursor, it's a crosshair. So even as I cross over into the viewport, it's still a crosshair. Another way is I know when I see this viewport right here, it just looks like a rectangle. It's just kind of a, a thin rectangle. If I click on the word model or paper, it takes me into model space and I can see now I have a pointer. My cursor is a pointer. As I move into the viewport, now it becomes a crosshair. As I move back out, it's a pointer. And also look at my viewport, it's a lot bolder. My UCS actually even moved inside the viewport whereas in paper space it was outside. Another way that you can toggle back and forth other than clicking on the word paper or model is if you double click inside the viewport, you're in model space. If you double click outside the viewport, you're in paper space. So now what we need to do is just double check that we've got the viewport scale set. So to do the viewport scale, you're gonna double click inside that viewport or get yourself into model space. And then we're going to double check. In the template that you used, we had already locked the template at a scale of 1 to 2, and it's already locked. I'm going to unlock it just so you can see that scale. So here would be 1 to 1 was just a little too big, 1 to 2 was just right. Once you get it panned, centered about exactly where you want it, then you can go ahead and lock that viewport. And it just locks that scale into place so you can't accidentally change it. For the sake of your project though, we've already got it set to 1 to 2, so hopefully everything's going to be centered just right where you need it. I'm going to come into paper space now, and in paper space what you just need to do is come in here and fill out the text in the title block. So I'm going to double click, and then you can type in whatever text you need. So you'll just double click on each one of these, you'll fill in the, the, the title. Double click into here, drawn by, you'll put your name or initials. Double click in here, the scale is one to two. Double click in here, you'll enter the date. Double click here, you'll enter your school name. Double click in here, 
This is where you can enter your course number or drawing number. And this is sheet number. There's only one page here, so it's one of one. One thing to be careful about, though, is when you're double clicking on those things, remember how I told you how you can get into model space? It's just to double click inside that viewport and suddenly you're in model space. When I'm in model space, I can't select any of this because this, this exists in paper space. It's not in model space. I'm going to put myself back into paper space. When you're ready to edit this text, be sure that you really have it highlighted. So double click on the text itself when it's highlighted and you'll be able to edit it when you're in paper space. If you go to double click on the text and you don't have it highlighted, do you see how it kind of highlights itself? If you're right next to it but you double click, look what happens. I wasn't on the text, so I'm not in the text edit command. I'm in the model space. And then I won't be able to edit anything. So that's a real common mistake to make. Just be sure to put yourself back into paper space. And then you can edit whatever text you need. When you're ready to plot, you're just going to click on the little plotter up here, Control P. There's different ways that you can get to it. And you're going to set your printer name. We're going to plot this at letter size. We need to make sure that it's going to plot it monochrome. Monochrome is going to print it all in black and white. And then what to plot is layout. So really the only thing that you should change here, um, the template should have everything else set up for you. You would just need to select whatever printer you're going to be using. And then you'll say OK. And it's off to, so select your printer. And then say OK. And it's off to the printer now. So that's it. Once you do this, it'll be the same for all the projects in Chapter 4. The shaft guide is the only one that's a little bit different, and that's because it's metric. The plot process is going to be the same. It's just that the drawing scale is not going to be 1 to 2 because it's a metric drawing. But that's it. Congratulations, you just plotted your first drawing with dimensions.